This is Ryan Holk with RadIdeas.com, and I'd like to show you today how you can use some really cool tools and effects that are part of the Pixlr, P-I-X-L-R.com family. And they have three apps here. You can see them on this homepage. The editor, which is the first one over here, uh, is a quasi-Photoshop-like Photoshop application. Uh, lets you do some cool things, text editing, painting, uh, manipulation of photos, things like that. The Express is a web app based image editor and I would say that it feels like a mobile editing option but it's actually sitting within a web browser on your computer so you can use larger images. Uh, the Pixel Omatic is literally a web app uh, you could take a picture and do all the editing and save it within the app. They've essentially taken Pixelomatic and built it into Express. So let me show you how easily Express works, what you could do with a photo. We're going to uh, be working on something as if we're planning for Easter that's coming and uh, the idea that he has risen. So I went to um, I went to dollarphoto.com and I found an image that I really liked here uh, from dollarphoto.com and um, we're going to use that as a source image. The uh, person who owns the royalties on this is Ikov Kalinin. Okay, so there's image attributions there. If you like this image, there's a file number 16648096 even for you. Okay, so uh, in case you missed it, I clicked the open image, pointed to it on my do my desktop, and it opened it up for me. And you'll notice that this window is pretty simple. Uh, these ads tend to change a bit depending on what it is that you've researched recently in Google, but um, super easy to use, just like a uh, app would be on your phone. You've got adjustment. You can do all sorts of things: heal the image, airbrush liquify. Um, you can stack images by using this add image feature and there's a cool way that you can pull the uh, opacity back and layer the two over each other if you're going for some sort of interesting look and feel. You can doodle um, and literally just scribble. I don't know if you can see that I've got a pen here um, and do all sorts of things. Uh, and if you like what you have done, you hit apply. If you want to hit cancel, it'll cancel it. Okay. Uh, if you want to zoom in and out, there's a zoom feature up here too. That's pretty cool. I really like this focal. Uh, it's a way to create focus. And notice there's two things here. There's two rings. Uh, the center dot is where you want the center of your focus to be. I'm going to put it right there on that sunburst. This is the edge of where in this area the transition goes from sharp to being blurry. So I'm going to pull this out just a little bit. Give So essentially it feathers the edge in between the two. Um, and you can do some things then like boost the color a bit of what's in the center area. You can add a glow depending on uh, what, you, what you are trying to do and what your image looks like, how much blurring there is. Um, so I'm going to set something here. I want that sun to pop just a little more. So I'm going to add that right there. Okay. Notice there is an option here that you could, uh, instead of doing a circle, you could do more of a box. So you could maybe fade out the top or the bottom of the image. But I like what I've got here because it's, it's a sun uh, set. So I'm going to hit apply. All right. And I've got a list of more tools here. Uh, there's all sorts of different things I could pick from. I could change the vibrance and, and bump up the intensity of the image a little. And let, that's not too bad, we'll do that. Uh, contrast, blur, if you've got a person, you could fix their red eye, smooth out defects in an image. There also are these really cool effects. And I like uh, some of the options here. The creative ones are absolutely fantastic. Uh, it will actually divide your image up into different grids so that you can do creative things with it. Um, and you can arrow through and find all sorts of different looks and feels. I really like how easy this works. Uh, but the one I'm going to go for 
I want to try subtle. And notice these have names. These are very much like it would be in a web app or a, a phone app, rather, iOS. Um, you can kind of see how some of those images, what happens when you apply different versions of them. I think I'm going to go with that one. Okay. Uh, it's subtle. I don't know how much you can tell, but it kind of fades off a little bit here. Uh, just gives me a nice focal point with lots of vibrance. Okay. And then there's some other ones here. Uh, these will actually make things look more like aged photos, vintage photos, and things. All sorts of options you can look through. I really like these overlay features. They do some cool things. Um, some of them are a little over the top. Um, obviously, that's probably not quite the look you'd be going for in an Easter event. So um, I won't use those, but it's a thing you might look through. I do like these canvas settings because they're you can kind of give it the feeling like it's a little bit of a painted on feel. Um, or like there's some sort of textured paper that you've printed this on top of. Um, this one here, carbon, uh, I kind of like the texture of this, so I'm going to just dial it back a little because it feels a little excessive to me, but I do want to hint at the fact that I was trying to give some texture and feel to this image. Okay, And then um, I'm going to hit apply, but there also is another one in here that I really like and it's this soft focus, kind of brings some focus to things here. Um, and so I'm going to dial it back a little. If you feel like something isn't quite right, you can try things like rotating it left or right. Uh, this will actually increase the stretching a little bit to fill the space. And so uh, you can kind of get it to fit. But I like the feel of that. So I think that's actually not too bad. Um, there's flames, there's fireworks, and depending on obviously the kind of image that you are working on, what it is that you're uh, up against, there are all sorts of options. Um, there is this really kind of cool one that I like. It's called Moody. Now, obviously that's a little excessive, um, but I can use this rotate and stretch to fill feature. Notice it looks like it's emanating from the center of my image, but it's obviously too strong. So I'm going to pull it way, 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 way back. I just want like a little hint that there's some sort of something going on there. Okay. Again, my, my whole goal in this one is to just show you how you can add some uh, layering effects and things to kind of bring some depth to images and your photos. So I'm going to hit apply. And the coolest thing here is um, I could add text. Here, there is uh, places you can pick what kind of font you want. There are different styles of font. Um, there are different options for font names. Um, you pick them by the type of font, and then it just gives you a list that you can sort through and type your, your text directly on. Uh, one word of caution is that once you lay the text down and hit the commit button, uh, you have committed to it. You can't move the text after the fact. That's the one little challenge I found with this tool in this way. So I have a tendency to not lay my text in here. I will do it later in another place. Okay, But I like the feel of this. It feels like something that I could say he has risen over the top of. So I'm going to hit save. And this is going to save this uh, to my desktop on my computer as a JPEG. So I want to make it the highest quality possible because I'm going to drop it into another um, piece of editing software and show you how we can drop some text on top and in just moments you have a postcard or a flyer. So let's just say um, this is uh, colored with um, texture. All right. So I just need a name I can remember. I'll put it right there. Now, uh, you'll notice that if you remember when I first opened Pixlr, I was given three app options. Okay, so I'm gonna go back here to Pixlr and let it load. Now, we were just using the Express, so now we're gonna launch the editor. 
And I'd like to show you, I can create a new image, open an image from my computer, open an image okay, from a web address or from a library. I'm going to create a new image. And the reason that I'm going to do this is I want to create a postcard. So I know typically I do postcards at 8.5 by 11. And when it comes to pixels, that is going to be, um, sorry, not 8.5, 11, 5 and a quarter by 8.5, a half, a half sheet. So uh, the width of that is going to be um, 2550 pixels wide, and the height is going to be 1650 pixels high. Now, how I got that number is I multiplied 300 pixels for every inch of width and height that I want, because I know that that's the best way to have high quality print is 300 pixels wide. So that happens to convey in a postcard to 2,550 pixels wide by 1,650 high. All right? And you can ignore this preset number. It will look at these as the default. So there we have a zoomed in, 29% zoomed in feature uh, of this image. Now, I'm going to say layer open an image as layer, and I'm now going to point to that image that I just saved and import it. Okay, there's my colored with texture image. Now notice, it just appeared here in my layers palette as a layer, and if I grab the arrow tool, I can now move it around and see how I'd like to place it. And I think I want to place it Something maybe like that, but it feels a little large. So I'm going to free transform. And notice, because it's as large as it is, my editing tools are out in space. So I'm going to have to go up here, and I'm going to grab it. And notice it does not stay linked unless you hit the, the shift key, and then it will uh, resize evenly across the image. Okay. Now, I'm going to put text across the top here. So I want the horizon line to be fairly low. And that's a pretty good place. Okay, So I'm going to come up here, hit return key, the enter key, and it commits the change. So now here's what I like about this app, especially. There's all sorts of things you can do. There's adjustment layers that match some of the things we saw actually in the other Pixlr app. Uh, there's some filters you can do, but I like how quickly in the other view that you can see the preview. So it really helps you have an idea of what you're applying before you just haphazardly go down the list trying things out. Okay, I would encourage you take a few minutes and and go through some of these sometime. But just as a quick show, this is kind of what I'm going for here. Okay, oops, I didn't mean to drag that, but. Okay, so let's say it's Easter. So we're going to declare that he, he, let's do all caps, he is, okay, we're going to make this be the largest we can get it to be. And I'm going to say risen. And notice here, I can choose through all sorts of fonts, okay. And I chose a light font there. Um, stick with that. All right. Now notice, over here in the layers palette, I now have that layer, he is. And I'm going to put the word risen on another layer. So I'm going to come back here, choose the text file again, click. And notice, it kept all of my presets. Okay. This time, I'm going to make this bold, and I'm going to say risen. And I'm doing different um, sizes there just to give a little bit of contrast between the fonts. Okay, so um, now obviously those are not quite large enough, but the largest you can scale a font in this app is 130 pixels. So the way to get around that is by doing this. Okay, I'm going to right click on this layer and I'm going to say duplicate layer. Okay. I'm going to turn off the one in the back. 
going to come down here to the he is. I'm going to right click, duplicate. I'm going to do the same thing, turning off the original layer. And I do that in case I happen to mess something up and need to go back a step. Okay, so I now have a copy of these two layers, Risen and uh, He Is. So what I want to do is I'm going to make it, instead of being editable text, I'm going to make it a drawing. So I'm going to right click again and tell it to rasterize. And it has just made this text be a drawing. And I'll show you what I mean in a moment. But while I'm at it, I'm going to do the same thing here. Right click, rasterize. Okay, now if I come up here, pick the arrow, okay? And I come over to edit, free transform. Notice I now get handles and I can drag this text super big. And if you click the shift key, it will keep the proportions correctly. And I want this to look like it's sitting right about on the horizon line. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna hit the return or enter key and it will commit that change. I'm gonna to come to the he is. I'm gonna come up here, free transform, hold the shift key, he is. That looks pretty good. Something you might wanna do is, if you did a look like this is try and figure out if you want the letters to look like they're just floating in space and be centered or if you want them to maybe be offset so that they appear that they're actually resting on the image layer below them, okay? Um, just kind of a personal preference. I'm gonna make them look like they're a little offset and I'm gonna hit return to commit my change now. Um, I like the feel of that. I feel like this probably needs to be white text. So there's this really cool feature right here at the bottom. Um, here's a button that says layer styles. Let me drag this down here a little bit. Uh, layer styles. And notice I have a drop shadow, inner shadow, bevel, outer glow, inner glow. Okay. Um, drop shadow. I can apply a drop shadow. Okay. Um, outer glow, inner glow all sorts of options there, okay? Uh, ways that you, you could change the opacity, you could change how it interacts with other layers here using this mode. I can see uh, if I choose different ones, I have different, it's going to interact different ways, okay? Depending on what the color is. Um, Okay, so you might want to fiddle with this even a little bit, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to dial this back a little bit. It is not quite 100%. Dial this one back so that it's not quite 100%, but a little darker in the line above it. Okay, I will now do a inner glow. Notice that it just cut down. Um, a bit on what I've got there working, but okay. Notice each of these does some unique things. Okay, drop shadow tends to often be the easiest one because you can kind of get it to pop off the background um, a bit. You just need to watch the direction of your sunlight so that your drop shadow is kind of consistent with it. And I don't want black, I actually want it to stand off. So I'm gonna do, okay, notice I've got a little glow there, okay. Just enough, notice these numbers, 22, 18, 57, and that's 90, okay. I'm gonna come and I'm gonna apply the same numbers here, 22, 18, I believe it was 27, and this was 90. Change this to white. Two. All right, now there's just a little subtle there. Um, you'll notice you may have to fiddle with the opacity a bit more. Um, 
now that we've got a, a drop shadow in there or raise the layer a little so that they don't overlap too much. But notice that very quickly we have uh, something we could use as the front of a postcard as a promotional item to send to our congregation. Again, this is a eight and a half by five and a half postcard size. And uh, I think that gives you an idea of some of what the tools within Pixlr Editor and Pixlr Express will do for you, how you can work using the two of them together to create uh, graphics and design. Uh, they'll do just about anything for you, but the beauty is that it will also do print ready things for you, not just on screen ability. Okay, so again, this is Ryan Hulk with radideas.com. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, until next time, blessings.